Travis River Charter School with This Week in History, specifically the week of March the 8th through 14th. Well, first up, we have President Nixon bowling. Uh, on March the 10th of 1970, a two-lane bowling alley was, well, finished the remodeling and reopened uh, underneath the driveway near the White House. Originally, it had been built in 1947 for President Truman. However, Truman really wasn't much of a bowler. He preferred poker as far as relaxation goes. Uh, President Eisenhower then had it turned into office space. So, friends and supporters of President Nixon donated the money, and it was remodeled and reopened. Uh, according to White House staff, Richard Nixon and his wife were both very good bowlers and quite competitive, too. Uh, over the years, there have been a number of things that have been built in the White House or on the White House grounds uh, for presidents and their families to be able to relax, because it's a little bit difficult for a president just to go to a movie theater, for example, with all the security and everything else that has to go along with it. So, uh, in 1902, for example, a tennis court was added for President Theodore Roosevelt. Uh, President Obama had the basketball goals added to each end. They're, they're movable. Also, the uh, striping done so he could play full, full court basketball games. Uh, the 1942, a 40 seat movie theater was built in the White House. 1954, President Eisenhower had a putting green installed. He loved golf. Uh, the swimming pool for President Ford was added in 1975, uh, and the the basketball court, along with a horseshoe pit, was added for George H. W. Bush in 90 and 91, respectively. Uh, 1993, President Clinton, there was a jogging track. Uh, there has been a billiard or pool table on and off at the White House since its first resident, uh, John Adams. President Lincoln said that billiards he found to be a particularly relaxing way to clear the mind. So, Alexander Graham Bell, March 10th, 1876, the first telephone call was made. Now, there are people who dispute whether or not Bell truly was the first one to invent a telephone. And he was challenged over 500 times on the patents that he held for various aspects of the telephone. He won every case, so I'm kind of inclined to give it to him. Uh, Bell, on uh, March the 10th of 1876, summoned his assistant, Mr. Watson, from the next room uh, with the now famous, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Uh, Bell was trained as a teacher of the deaf, as was his father. His mother and his wife were both deaf as well. And there's some evidence that he was trying to find a mechanical means of helping the deaf hear. The, uh, he eventually held 18 patents himself and co-held 12 others. He was a man of varied interests. He was one of the founding members of the National Geographic Society. He was its second president. Uh, uh, he also uh, came up with several designs for aircraft, uh, a hydrofoil, and the metal detector. The metal detector was kind of a rush job, actually. Uh, the reason why he came up with this was to try and locate the bullet that was in the dying President Garfield. Uh, he tested it in lab, uh, in a barn actually, with uh, pig carcasses that he had fired bullets into, and it worked quite fine in the tests. When he went to try it on the President, though, it was a failure. It didn't work. Of course, he wasn't really given a fair shot either. The jealous doctor honestly weren't too keen on him being there. They wanted to be the ones to do it themselves as far as finding the bullet and saving the president's life. He was only given about 20 minutes with the president and most importantly he wasn't able to really survey the room and see what the setup was or he might have discovered something. Turns out that President Garfield was lying on also what was a fairly new invention at the time the metal coil spring mattress, which of course foiled his metal detector. Uh, when he found out about this later, he was absolutely heartbroken and also furious. But Alexander Bell and the metal detector. On March 11th of 1971, Mr. Philo Farnsworth passed away. Farnsworth is the father of television. Uh, 
at the age of 21, he came up with a device called an image dissector. There had been various attempts at mechanical ways of, of showing television that none of them really worked too well. His, uh, his image dissector, though, allowed images to be transmitted electronically. And if you ever disobeyed your mother and got too close to the television screen uh, and you saw the little squares of various different colors or shades of black or and gray and white, that's basically his idea. Uh, supposedly he got it when he was 14 years old when he was plowing a field. He was looking at the rows and observing his back and forth motion and that's where he got the idea. Uh, he's really a brilliant man. He developed most of the technology used in the television really up until the 21st century when you start to get high definition televisions and such as that. Uh, he also contributed to inventions to promote, uh, improve radar, infrared night vision devices, the electron microscope, and the baby incubator. Now, Farnsworth himself was only on television one time. 1957, the game show, I've Got a Secret. The basic setup was uh, you had a panel who would ask questions to try and guess what this person's secret was. He won, the panel was able to do so, and the grand prize was $80 and a carton of Winston cigarettes. Farnsworth didn't smoke, by the way. Anyway. Well, that's all for this week in history, but just to see what's coming up. Next week, we'll take a look at this man, probably the greatest con man who wasn't a politician. Well, Thank you all. I'm Carl Lanning, Bradsburg Charter School, and we look forward to seeing you right here next week.